everyone, and welcome to another episode of Butterfly Kisses, A Journey of Spiritual Transformation. I am Amy Gray Cunningham, your host, and today I am joined with Shannon Zellner, and she is a joy enabler. We'll have her tell us a little bit more about that in a minute, an energy medicine practitioner and a spiritual life coach. And I met her through an online group and she, we got to talking a little bit and she has such a fascinating story that I asked her to join us on um, Butterfly Kisses. So I'd like for you guys to please welcome Shannon and Jenny, will you please tell us a little bit about yourself? Oh, thank you. I'm so honored to be here, Amy. Thank you so much for inviting me. Um, gosh, tell you about myself. Well, long story short, I am, uh, as you said, I'm a joy enabler and love that title, by the way, that came, that was divinely given to me, um, this year and, um, I'm an energy medicine practitioner, like you said, and then a spiritual life coach, because so much of what I do is about connecting with the divine and embodying the divine. And I am so, um, gosh, it's been such a, a even just in the past few months, such a transformation for me. And one of the biggest challenges I had was even comprehending what joy was. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I lived in a constant state of fear and worry and hypervigilance. And, and my mentor, um, I remember she made me a meme for my birthday a couple of years ago. And she said, you know, what would it take for you to choose joy no matter what? And Ooh. I had no idea what that meant. But I can happily say that I now live in a default state of joy. And obviously, because I'm human, I, I dip down into fear and worry and guilt here and there, but I bounce right back up to that default state of joy. And that is my goal for everyone else is, is to live in that default state of joy and love and bliss and happiness. How do we do that? <laughs> <Ooh>. <laughs> well, so longer story short is you know i experienced throughout my life all kinds of different trauma you know from sexual trauma and and verbal and emotional abuse through um, marriages and 25 other things we could talk about for hours <laughs> but uh, i the, in the past few years in particular i really i got involved in a program with my mentor allison who i allison jk who i will mention because she has helped change my life completely like i never could have imagined number one that i'd be sitting here talking to you on a podcast but that <laughs> but that i would even be in this state of being because i suffered from depression and anxiety and chronic pain for 30 40 years and what happens is when we have the, all those sorts of traumas aside from our, our upbringing, aside from societal conditioning, ancestral, you know, all, all the stuff that comes along with our ancestry, we develop blockages in our bodies, our DNA gets programmed to, our DNA even gets programmed to have anxiety and depression and a multitude of other things, of course, which we know. And so what I have done is it's, it's greatly chakra work. So it's, num that's part of it. And so it's clearing out the chakras that get blocked from all of these traumas and false beliefs. And it's an onion. It's, you know, it's layers. You know, you think you're done with something. Oh, no, there's another layer. <laughs> so, so it's partly that. But then it's also the applied mindfulness coach or applied mindfulness coaching, which is rewiring, actually rewiring our neural pathways in our brains. Because if we live in... Um, with abuse or trauma or just the society that leads us to believe we um, must live in fear of this and that, our, our neural pathways get, get created so that that's how we perceive the world. So if you grow up thinking I'm not loved and the world is against me, that is the lens through which you see and expect everything to happen to you. And so when we rewire those neural pathways to I am loved and oh my gosh, look at all the possibilities out there in front of me. When you start to see the world through that lens, your entire life changes. Mm -hmm. And that's, and then you are able to get to that default state of joy and love. Like my head's mm -hmm. really just talking about it. <laughs> How do you rewire the neuropathways? 
So that is part of the core system that I use from my mentor, the vibrational upgrade system. I do much more than that. That's the core basis of it. And that is part, so part of that is it's it's a little bit difficult to explain, but it's called it's called a clearing statement. And so I would ask, you know, if I'm working with somebody, anything and everything that's ever caused you to believe you are not loved. Would you like to burn up with the flames of transmutation? Or some people can, will say the violet flame. So the person says yes. And then I go through this process here. And it sounds so simple, but it's all about energy because we're mm-hmm. made of energy. So it's, it's clearing out the things that have caused dense energy within us and revealing the beauty and the mm-hmm. free flowing energy. And that's that's part of how it actually rewires your brain aside from um just the mindset work you know the 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 life coaching type work too all of that combined together Mm -hmm. is completely transformational i just i i really get in awe at times considering where who i was three and a half four years ago and who i am now and and so excited about who am I going to be in a month from now or five years from now, you know, because it's only going to get better. <laughs> yeah. Can you tell uh, the audience kind of your history, where, where you come from and how this has transformed your experience and your perception now? Where I've come from, meaning physically or? No, spiritually. Spiritually, okay. <laughs> Oh goodness, that uh, I will keep that as short as possible. You know, I, I, when I was very young, I went to the Catholic church and had my first communion, but that my parents didn't take us. They had their own falling out with the church. <laughs> and then, and then, so I would go with my grandparents or my aunt and uncle or whomever, but then we left, we didn't live near them anymore. And so, we didn't go to church and quite honestly for let's just say eight or nine, 10 years, eight or nine years, like I don't even know what my spiritual beliefs were at that point in between, let's just say the ages of eight to 16. I don't really know, <laughs> but, but I, I do know in hindsight that Jesus, God, the angels, they were always with me. They were mm-hmm. always with me. I didn't, I wasn't aware of that cognizant, but when I was in, 11th grade, I met a boy and started dating him who was a Christian. And I, we just hit it off. He was my best friend, but he broke up with me because I was not a Christian and he didn't want to be involved with me with someone who was going to go to hell. Interesting. That was very interesting. And I, at that point, I was agnostic. Like, you know, I knew there was a higher power, but, and, you know, I didn't really have a clear sense of anything. But that opened my eyes. I'm like, wow, what's that all about? And I read a book. What was it called? It was called The Late Great Planet Earth. And I can't remember the person's name who wrote it. And have you ever read it? No, I haven't. That's okay. interesting. It, yeah, it, it, from what I recall, of course, this was 30 something years ago, it, he talked about all the things that were happening in the world and, and how they had been predicted in the Bible and revelations and everything. And it kind of blew my mind at that time. Yeah. And I remember at the end of the book, it's, you know, basically it was, it was along the lines of, you know, if you want to accept Jesus Christ as your savior, say this prayer, blah, blah, blah. And I did it and I felt it. And that was really like the catapult for me into my spiritual journey like i was blown away because i literally felt that in my system Mm -hmm. but then from there you know i i got a a bible actually i think it was that's not true it was a bible i was given like for my first communion (laughs) you know so it had i still had it and it was like the king james version which is impossible to read you know um (laughs) or understand yeah And I remember, you know, multiple times I picked it up through the years and just didn't quite get it yet. But I knew at that point, I, I, I believed in, in Jesus and God and all of that sort of thing. And it was always around me. And I even remember I had a pen pal right around that time of that, my story in in 11th grade, 
I still have all the letters actually. And I remember this was a, a, a kid from a different country thanking me for helping them um, with their spiritual questions. It, it, and I remember, I read that letter in the past five years and I was like, what could I have possibly said as a teenager to help this kid out? But that just proved to me in hindsight, like God has always been with me, speaking mm -hmm. through me, even though I wasn't aware of it. And I eventually started going to church and then I got into really too, um, as I perceive it now, really extreme to the point where I couldn't even have anything in my house that was not of Jesus. Like if I had a Buddha or a Native American print on the wall, that was evil and I had to get rid of it. Mm -hmm. And so, I mean, I have been all over the place and it, it, and I feel a lot of regret because my dad passed away when I was 21 and the summer before he died, my mom and dad had taken a trip out to Arizona. I well, they took a trip everywhere, but they brought back to me this Native American sand art and it was to help, you know, bring blessings through your door or whatever. And I threw that away Ooh. because it wasn't from Jesus. And eventually I got out of that extreme extremity, extremeness. Yeah. <laughs> and so things have so evolved in the past 10 years since then. But now um, I'm in such a beautiful place. You know, I, and it's interesting because last week, I'll tell you this, somebody, um, on my Facebook page said, well, she didn't say on my page, but basically that I was going to burn in hell for eternity for my beliefs. And that same day, all within three hours, someone else messaged me wondering what my beliefs were because she couldn't post in my group if she, if I didn't have the same beliefs as her. And, and like my mind was spinning. I'm like, I don't even know what my beliefs are anymore, really. You know, I don't believe in God or the higher power or source. I don't believe it. She, he has a gender. To me, it's just a beautiful, it's love. It's divine love. It's an energy to me. Mm -hmm. And so it's been interesting the past week. I've, I've had these things come up, I don't want to say challenging, but kind of challenging and helping me explore my beliefs. And now here I am on this podcast with you. So it's all, you know, it's all synchronistic. And I just know that I am constantly held in divine. You can, can you hear me? Like, I know that I am loved unconditionally. And I know that angels are with me every day. And I know Jesus and Mother Mary. I, I know that they are always here helping me so that I can help other people. That's it in a nutshell. <laughs> That's an amazing place to be you know, to, to, to have that feeling, especially I can relate to the extreme viewpoints of religion and having and throwing things away because they weren't of a particular viewpoint or thought. Mm -hmm. And I remember a, a friend of mine, one time I was doing, I was doing yoga and he told me that that was sacrilegious because I was, I was giving praise or honor to somebody else that wasn't God. And I thought this is, that's just really, for me, that was very extreme mm -hmm. and I couldn't, I, I love doing yoga. I love yoga. I love, I, I was doing it for the, for the exercise and the physical grounding. Right. <laughs> yeah. Know? And I didn't see it as, as being wrong, quote unquote. Right. And, and I was told that it was wrong and that kind of led me down a different path of questioning, well, what are my beliefs and what, yeah. you know, what, what is it that God really wants from me? Mm -hmm. And so I, I completely agree with you on that. Uh, you had mentioned a few minutes, a little while ago about trauma and mm -hmm. how it has a effect on our body and how we hold it. Can you explain a little bit about trauma and the effects on the body and the chakras and what the chakras are and how that kind of all correlates? So, yeah, um, question, but yeah, yeah, I, I'll try to keep that short. <laughs> I can talk for hours, you know. 
So for people who don't don't know, so chakras essentially are, you have seven main ones in your body and they are essentially wheels of energy that help disperse energy throughout your body to your tissues, your cells, your organs and everything to keep that vital life force from God flowing through us. And what can happen is if, if you think of, let's think of your, your chakra system as a, as a river. In the ideal world, it's this beautiful, my hand's disappearing, flowing river, free flowing river, everything's, ah, oh, it's all peaceful and lovely, right? Except then someone says, you suck. You're not good at kickball. You know, you don't write very well. Oh, they're throwing rocks into your river, okay? And, and so those things keep happening all day long throughout your life, you know, here and there. And depending on where you are in your mindset, you let it bounce off you or you hold on to it. OK. And so then now you're creating. Well, yeah, I shouldn't say you are creating blockages are being created in your chakras because of these things that happen to you. And so when your chakra, when your wheel can't turn properly, now it can't disperse the energy to your body. And so that's then what can cause pain and illness and disease. So for, for people with trauma, such as me, and a multitude of others, right, millions of us. So for instance, my, my sacral chakra, which is right, you know, beneath your navel and you're from your sacrum in that area, its general purpose is I have the right to feel. And so if you have been told that you don't have a right to feel that your feelings are not valid, stop crying, you know, emotions are bad. It creates blockages in that chakra. And so then you can end up with low back pain, chronic low back pain, reproductive issues. You know, those those are two big ones for that chakra. It also has to do with creativity, being able to experience pleasure, whether it's physical pleasure you know, in your body or just pleasure in general, being able to enjoy the beautiful sunset behind you. <laughs> you know, and so each chakra has a, a primary purpose at, in your life. And so depending on, I mean, and, and they're, not, they're not autonomous. A chakra is not an island unconnected to anything else. They're all, it's, it's an energy system. So it's all connected. Mm -hmm. um, some people have chakras that are blocked worse than others. And so, yeah, so that's part of the energy medicine work is helping through through energy transference from God is to clear out those blockages. And I, like I said, I had chronic back pain starting when I was about eight years old. Oh, wow. So 40 something years of chronic back pain. I mean, there were there have been times in my life where I would go to the chiropractor weekly because I was always in pain. It was, I've spent so much money on chiropractors <laughs> and now I don't have chronic back pain anymore because I have done so much clearing work on my root chakra, on my sacral chakra, on all of them, but those two in particular. And so now when my back hurts, now it's like a barometer, you know, it's a red flag, I'm like, hmm, what's going on with me emotionally? What else might be getting cleared out right now that's causing my sacral chakra to go, oh, ouch. Because right, yeah, right now I'm, I'm experiencing back pain this past week. And I just know it's, it's part of this bigger thing that's coming through me. That's part of my mission. So more stuff is being cleared up to help with that. What do you mean by clearing work? What do you do to clear? So, so are you familiar with Reiki? Mm-hmm. Okay, so, yeah. yeah. If you can explain so, it for the listeners, that would be great. Yeah. So for people who, who understand what laying on of hands means, it's, it's similar to that where where the healing energy of source of God is, is being channeled through me, through my hands. So I hover or put my hands over people's bodies, over their chakra system. And that energy goes in magically <laughs> and helps clear out the trauma, clear out the, the false beliefs and the lies and all that sort of stuff that has caused those physical symptoms and emotional symptoms in our bodies. Do people have to be willing to allow Reiki to work or can Reiki just work? So that's, it's, there's a two part answer to that. Number one, so that we are not breaking universal law. 
I don't, I don't send energy to people unless they ask for it because otherwise I could be impacting their free will. And I don't want to do that. It's everyone's choice as to what is done to their body energetically or, well, it's not always everyone's choice, right? But <laughs> it should be one's choice. So, but at the same time, you don't have to believe it can work for it to work. I believe it's more helpful if, because then you're more accepting of it, but it, you don't have to believe that it works for it to work because it's, it's, it's energy, it's healing. When you say energy, what do you, what do you mean by energy? So we are all made of mostly water mm -hmm. and water and, and frequency and vibration. It's all, so if you got, think of, uh, I'm trying to think how the best way to put this, atoms and you get, oh, 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 this is even better, popcorn, all right? <laughs> <laughs> Love popcorn. <laughs> right? So, so how, how do you make popcorn from kernels? You fire, and fire is energy, right? Mm -hmm. And so that fire, that heat is now going to make all the, the popcorn kernels do this, which is, is dispersing more energy, and then it pops into kernels. Um, so yeah, we are, and we are all made, made comprised of what part, you know, greatly water was 90%, 80%, 90% water. I totally get the, the whole popcorn thing and the, and the energy, because it just, yeah. when the energy is going through and the kernels have, it, it just kind of pops and just overflows. Yeah. It makes of... sense in my mind. <laughs> But I know what I'm talking about. I'm just not articulating it. Well, I, and, and the reason why I brought that up was, you know, some people may be thinking, what kind of energy is she talking about? Is it, you yeah. know, electrical energy or is it? Well, and it, it kind of is electrical energy. I mean, it, because, and that's, I mean, I basically at this point, because my abilities keep expanding as mm -hmm. time goes on, like I am connecting to the frequencies of the universe, you know, because it's it's all frequency and in and, and waves and electromagnetic stuff going on, right? Um, and so I'm tapping into that and bringing that in. So to me, it is it is part. It's, it's electro electrical, and it, and and some people will actually feel it in not unpleasantly, but can feel tingling and warmth and maybe even some zapping here and there, but pleasant zapping, not like, uh, but <laughs> <laughs> and, and some people may feel nothing. But I, I from my experience, if 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 people don't feel it, it's I, I think it's because I feel that it's because they have so much more blockages, their energy is so in like a ball. So if you think of like when you're stressed out and you get a knot in your back, mm -hmm. for instance, I mean, that's blocked energy. So that's, um, yeah. And so the, the, the energy part of it is, is like helping to release that, that dense knot in your back. Allowing it to, the energy to dissipate and then to, to disperse and go to where it's supposed to go so that everything is free flowing again. So tell us a little bit about the spiritual life coaching that you do. Yeah, that okay. is, it, it, it's all so encompassing, you know, it's like, it's all, there, it's not necessarily separate. So for me, number one, the energy that is coming from God, that, that is, that's spiritual right there. The, mm -hmm. the mindset stuff that re rewiring the neural pathways, when I do that, I am connecting, still connecting with source to help with that. I'm bringing in angels and, and divine beings to help with that. And then, and then the, then there's the, the, the life coaching part of it. It's, I mean, no, I'm not teaching people. I'm helping people explore their own spirituality and their, their belief systems and not necessarily just about God, but in about life in general. And because we are all, as far as I'm concerned, we are all connected mm -hmm. because we are energy, because we all came from the same source at some point in time. And we are, we're all interconnected. There is no me and you, it's, it's, it's always we. Everything we say, think and do impacts everybody around us. We are not, again, the island. We are not an island. We are all connected. We are all molecules in the ocean. It's, we cannot really be separate at any time.
You bring up a really good point. And the more that I'm thinking about that, right before we got on this call, I was telling you I was having an issue with uh, Verizon. (laughs) (laughs) And it was really funny because my response to this lady really affected the way she reacted to me. And then her response to me really, and so it was back and forth, back and forth. And she was really trying to help me. So I was trying to allow myself to just let it go yeah and breathe but I would and to be totally honest with you I wasn't really in a really good frame of mind when I called Verizon to begin with (laughs) I wasn't in a joy state of mind (laughs) and then when we got on this call just by being in your presence I started to relax and and I started to uh, just calm down some And so that energy of joy and peace has through the airwaves of Zoom. (laughs) Thank you for sharing that. So I can see where, you know, that I feel the energy anyway. And and I appreciate that. Thank you so much for sharing that. And and it it brings me to mind too. I, I was visiting my son and his wife and my granddaughter last weekend, I think. And my son does not believe in any of this. Um, you know, my mom's a little wackadoodle, but <laughs> he loves me doing it, but he, does, he doesn't believe it. Well, I'll tell you two quick stories. Actually, it was really cool. I'll show you. I didn't wear it, but I like to wear my crown. So I'm going to put my crown on. Ouch. I like to wear my crown. I, I like love your crown. feel like I'm a queen. And... And I was telling my son how wearing my crown, it changes my energy. I feel more powerful and not in a negative way, but I feel more in my power when I put my crown on. And my son, who does not believe in any of this, he's like, well, of course, mom, it's because of the rocks that are in the crown. You know, that's why royalty would wear crowns. And and I was like, who are you? (laughs) Well, it's just energy. And he's like, uh, and I, I was like, you believe in this? He's like, well, I believe in energy. I don't believe in anything you're doing, but I believe in energy. <laughs> and then he said, which blew my mind, is he's like, well, yeah, you know, if you walk into a room, you know, you can just sense the bad vibes. And again, like my mom brain was blown. I'm like, oh, my gosh. Like he actually has, even though he might not be aware of it, he's been listening to me all these years, right? Mm -hmm. But that's the thing. I mean, I don't think there's a person on earth who can say they don't understand that walking into a room and feeling the bad vibes or the good vibes or getting a bad vibe off someone. So Mm -hmm. if you're feeling it, you're also sending it. Very true. Yeah. And I was definitely sending it to that lady on Verizon. So I'm going to have, when she calls me back later, I'm going to have to apologize because she was only trying to help me, but I was definitely not (laughs) sending goodwill towards her. (laughs) (laughs) Customer service, that's got to be about the hardest job there is in the world, right? Oh, yes. (laughs) That and teachers, teachers and customer service. Yeah, all that energy they're taking in yes so how can uh, people get in touch with you where can they find you how can they get energy work and if they're interested in that sort there of- are multiple ways to find me i have my website thelightvessel.com so that's the name of my business is or is the light vessel because i am the light vessel you are the light vessel we are all vessels of light we are all vessels of love and that was a divinely given name to me when i was asking what it my business wanted to be called so there's that i'm on facebook i have a facebook page as the light vessel they can also find shannon zellner those are the easiest ways and i'll be doing my own podcast which i I'm hoping you'll be a guest on mine someday. (laughs) Love it. (laughs) I wanted to tell you too, um, I've I've been exploring, I've been asking a lot, who who could I best help? And it it finally has come to me. And it's actually, it's come full circle from 20 years ago. Where my passion is and has been, and I'm finally allowing it to be my passion because I've been suppressing it, I believe, out of fear. 
is women with sexual trauma. And because that had, had was my experience as a child, well, as, a, as a, my whole life, right? Especially as women, um, mm -hmm. you know, it doesn't have to be just sexual trauma. It's sexual oppression, it's sexual harassment, it's catcalling, it's, it's misogyny, it's all of those sorts of things that we are subjected to daily. That's really, I, with all the things that were going on in Afghanistan, um, which my son has been deployed there twice. So it really, really hit me last week. And it's just the universe. It's just God saying, it's throwing all these things into my path. And like, Shannon, this is, this is how you can best serve people. This is what you know. This is what you're passionate about. And when I get on a roll, like it really, like the fierceness of it, the fierce love, for women, for wanting women to recover from it so that they can also live in default states of joy and love. Like, I, it really just starts coming out of me, like, like eyes get all wide, like, and my, I can, I can even feel like, you're just starting to talk about it. And I'm like, my, my energy is changing, like, I get all tingly talking about it. I don't want any more little girls to suffer. I don't want women to feel that it is a stigma. And that is such a huge thing. Like depression was 30 years ago, you know, no one wanted to admit they had depression because, you know, ooh, it's, it was that, that stigma around it. And that's the way it is with sexual trauma. You know, we're, we're made to feel that we deserved it, that we did something wrong. And so we have this guilt and embarrassment and shame and anger, and we don't want to admit it. We don't want to talk about it, especially if it was a family member God forbid you say that, you know, Grandpa Joe, you know, molested you as a kid, mm -hmm. right? And I, I, I'm done with that. I, it's time for us to speak up and stand up so that no more young girls have to deal with that. Because quite honestly, it completely screwed up my life. And I did not understand until the past couple of years what created all these things within me, the not feeling love, not being able to really love people, being afraid of being seen, afraid of speaking my truth, um, even as extreme as, especially when, when I was younger, not so much now, like if, if my bra strap showed, or who oh no, oh, or if I had a slightly see through shirt on, and people could see the outline of my bra, I would not buy that shirt because I did not want men or boys to be attracted to me. I did not want that attention. Mm. And I, um, I'm just, I don't want that for anyone else. And, and knowing how it impacted me and made me so miserable and caused me to attract to abusive marriages because I didn't love myself, I didn't have self-esteem. And then I put up with that for 16 years. You know, and it all goes back to what happened to me when I was a young child. So yeah, that that is truly my passion is is to help women overcome that. You just brought up attract abusive relationships. How do you think that these experiences cause us to attract these type of experiences over and over and over again in our lives? So it's partly energy <laughs> because <laughs> Right, because when we live in a, when we live up here in that in that higher vibration, higher vibrations of love and joy and gratitude, we attract what we put out. Right, so that's how I attracted lovely you. That's how I am attracting more and more beautiful women who are not living in in fear all the time, who are not negative all the time, who don't believe that the world is out to get them. Because mm -hmm. if if you think about it, if the, the phrase min, misery loves company. Mm -hmm. You know what? Love loves company. Yes. As well. And, and I lived for, you know, most of my life in that fear vibe of, you know, fear again, of, of being seen, fear of being loved, fear of being touched, fear of blah, 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 blah. I can go on about that for 10 minutes, <laughs> you know? And so because I had no self-esteem because I did not love myself. I did not value myself. I attracted men who also, <laughs> number one, felt that way about themselves. And when we feel that way about ourselves, and that's how we treat other people, because that's what we know. We don't know any different. 
Mm -hmm. What are like two or three things that people can do, women can do today that could start changing our thought processes or the energy within us from that of being a victim to that of being a victor? Yes, the victor thing. I love that. Did I tell you about my my victor tree? No. No. I'll I'll come back to my victor tree. I love that. It's it's quite timely that you said that, and I'll tell you why in a minute. So uh, to answer your question, this is a challenge, and it's to start paying attention to your thoughts. Now there are people out there, and I used to be one of them, who said, "Just start thinking positively. Just start controlling your thoughts." Well, it's not that easy. Especially if you have had a lifetime of crappy things happening to you. You can't just, oh, I'm just going to start thinking positive thoughts and say affirmations 10 times a day. No, it's just, it, all that does is set you up for failure and feeling like a failure. So, but starting to pay attention to your thoughts, your self-talk. Now, and I notice this about myself too. Like if I, I, I and I just did it, I, I think last night, I don't know, I dropped something on the floor and I said, oh, you, you, you Dumbo, you know, whatever word I use, <laughs> whatever I did wrong, right? And, but I caught it right away. I'm like, oh my gosh, don't talk to yourself like that. You know, so it's really paying attention to your self-talk. And, and now, and this is the way healing works, Amy, is once you become aware of it, the healing begins. As soon as you are aware that you are saying mean things to yourself, you will now start to see more often when you are saying mean things to yourself. And right there, the healing starts. Isn't that awesome? Right there. So that's one thing. Obviously, doing something you love, whether it is reading a book, journaling, painting, going for a walk in nature, yoga, you know, whatever, just listening to music, dancing around your house, even if it's just for 10 minutes a day, start to do something that brings you joy. That when you do it, your shoulders relax, your mind relaxes. You know, th those are just a couple of things. And obviously, you know, go, well, I shouldn't say obviously, going out in nature, going out and hugging a tree. Now, oh, Oh, what a segue. So, <laughs> <laughs> so a, a, a couple months ago, I, I live right next to a beautiful park here. And I totally, I am in love with trees. And I have been for, for, for ages and ages and ages. I have tree stuff all over my house in Minnesota. And in, in my belief system, we are all connected. And when I say we all, I mean everything, the dirt, the trees, the bugs, the plants, like we're all connected because it's we're all energy. So I went to the park and there's this, this, I don't know, like this tree just called me over. Like I just felt this attraction to go over to this tree. So I, I put my hand on it and I was like, hello, tree, you know, <laughs> and I was like, do you mind if I lean against you. And it just, it felt, it felt good. So I leaned against the tree and it was later in the day and no one was around. So, and it's right in front of this beautiful lake. So I, I went to the side of the tree and I, like, I put my arm around it, you know, like you got your arm around someone's shoulder. All right. There's no one around. No one can judge me. <laughs> and I asked the tree its name. And I started hearing, I have clear audience. So I hear things. I have lots of different clairs. I started hearing the names with a V, the V sound. And finally, clear as day, I heard Victor. I'm like, oh, I said, well, hello, Victor. I'm Shannon. And, it was, and I was like, oh, nice to meet you, Shannon. Oh, I'm going to stand here and hug this tree. And uh, within a minute or two, clear as day in my head, I heard, I fancy you. And it was Victor talking to me because I don't talk like that. Like, who says that, right? Like, that's like 1920s or something. I don't know. But it was so clear as day in my head. And it was just so beautiful, you know, just and it just it's so calming to just you don't have to go out and hug a tree and ask it its name, but just to just go sit outside, sit out in the grass, sit out under a tree or by the lake and just connect with nature. 
it's so it can just bring such peace to your body to your mind and again you know so many people i don't have time for that you know 10 minutes 10 minutes take 10 minutes for yourself that 10 minutes can be very beneficial it can it doesn't sound like it but it really can mm -hmm. if i would have taken 10 minutes this morning maybe i would have saved myself on verizon <laughs> <laughs> Oh, funny. <laughs> just saying, just saying. <laughs> well, is there anything else you would like for to share with our listeners about being a joy enabler or your spiritual life coach practice? It really is. It's my consistent, my consistent message, Amy, which is for everyone to, to know that you're loved to know that you matter, to know that you are necessary, that you are beautiful, no matter what is going on in your life, no matter what you've done in your past, whether you are doing what you feel is a menial job or whether you are some rocket scientist, it doesn't matter what you're doing in your day-to-day -day life as a career or you are a stay-at-home mom, none of that is indicative of your worth because you are a breathing, body, you are worthy of love. You are loved. You are a divine sovereign being. I get choked up. And when I get choked up, it's not me, it's God coming through me because God loves all of us so much and wants us to live in joy and happiness. We are not put here to suffer. And that is my mission is to help people believe that and feel that and live that because when we can do that we as you have experienced in the beginning of our call we emit that we emanate that to other people that we do and when we can do that at some point we will be able to have heaven on earth when everyone can live from their hearts instead of from their fearful minds and that's my such a big part of my mission is to just help everybody know that they're loved and spread it to others. That is an awesome mission. It's one of mine as well. That's why we are so aligned. <laughs> we connected, I love it. I yeah. Love it. Well, one of the, uh, the other questions I ask all my guests at the end of the show is if you had an opportunity to sit on the park bench or on a park bench, and have a conversation with someone, whether it be someone that's dead or alive for an hour, who would it be and what would you talk about? Wow, well, that's easy. I, that would be Jesus. I mm -hmm. mean, and, and talk about love and, 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 uncond and that's not, it's unconditional love, it's divine love. It's not that conditional love we have for you know, ice cream and <laughs> whatever, you know. <laughs> Although I, mean, I do have unconditional love for ice cream. But, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, he he was such a one, he and, and for me is, is one of the most, and there are multiple, but tangible, I guess is the word it comes in, tangible examples of unconditional love, of how it is to, to be, to be, it's not, it's about being and not doing. Mm -hmm. It's yeah. And that it's, he, he was love. It wasn't because of what he did. He just was love. And that's my goal is I just want to be love. I think that I am. Most Raise, days. Raise is love. Let me ask you one other question that just popped into my mind yeah. because you talked about earlier about being a Christian and being, you know, do you still consider yourself a Christian? No, I don't because I don't believe that I have to accept Jesus as my savior to go to heaven. And it doesn't mean I don't believe in him, but I don't believe that I have to believe in him as the son of God, as my savior, or I'm going to go to hell. I don't believe that. So, and I, I, I have dabbled 
in multiple religions. And at the end of the day, they all say the same thing. Be love. Love one another. That's it. Mm -hmm. That's what I believe. What I believe as well. Thank you, Shannon, so much for being a part of Butterfly Kisses today and sharing with us your joyful spirit. It's always a pleasure. Thank you. Oh, I'm so grateful to you. <laughs> Thank you for joining me on another episode of Butterfly Kisses, a journey of spiritual transformation. If you like what you've heard, please subscribe by hitting the subscribe button. This way you won't miss it when a new episode is released. Also join me on the Facebook page at Butterfly Kisses Podcast. Here we can continue the conversations we've been discussing on these podcasts, and you can also ask questions of our guests as well. Also, if you're interested in learning more about Akashic Record readings, you can schedule a free 15-minute consultation with me on the Facebook page, or you can do so by visiting my website at amygraycunningham.com. Again, thank you, and remember, always spread your gorgeous wings, my friend, and fly. Until next time, see ya.